What's up guys, it's Sean from Winnington Warriors and I'm coming to you today with a quick vehicle specific video on this 2004 GMC Sierra 1500. We're gonna do the side doors and the back window. The back window is a single piece with the defrosters. I do have it pre-cut with Kavacha. We're using the uh, CS charcoal on all sides and rear, 5%. Let's get to it with the disassembly of the door to pop the panel and then we'll do the inside prep. All right now to pop the panel on these 04 GMC, same thing as the Silverado. We take out the lock switch here from the front, pop it with the hook tool. Yep, from the back, pull it out. Take off this plastic piece right here. From the front, lift the handle up, slide that off. And then we have a seven millimeter here, a seven millimeter here, and usually one on the bottom right there. Oh, that's weird. The joys of old vehicles. So if you get it just spinning, you gotta put some tension on where it's coming from and hit it at the same time with the drill. There we go. So we had to pull on it at the same time because whatever it's screwing into is just spinning. And then with the bottom, as we pull it off, we'll figure that out. We also have to take this front triangle off here, go behind it with the stick, pop it right off. Bottom has a hook in it. Now we should be able to slide the panel up. There we go. So that screw on the bottom, sometimes they're missing because they've gone through like window regulator repairs and whoever's taken them apart before actually ruins that down there. So it turns out that that screw was not even connected. So what we'll do is we'll pop the panel, pull the gasket out like so, and then we'll slide the panel back in. So these panels actually lift up. They don't, yeah, there's the piece right there. They don't actually pop into place. They slide into place. So we keep that top away, slide the bottom in. And this is actually the piece that um, goes behind here. Then you can just see there's this piece is missing. So this obviously isn't from us. Whoever took the panel apart before did it the wrong way and obviously broke things and they had to glue it back together. Not common, but it does happen. Make sure our windows are rolled down. We'll take the back panel off first. We'll take the back panel off next. Take the locks pin from the back, pop that forward. You can see it goes into this little hole here, which is the knob to lock and unlock. You always wanna make sure this is in the right position when we're reinstalling it. And you're gonna go from front to back. But I'll show you how to do that when we do that. Pop with the same cover that we did in the front door. No screw behind here, but you still have to take it off because when we pull the panel off, it becomes part of it. And we just have the screw right in here, seven millimeter again. This is always the longest one. And then on the bottom, front bottom corner, seven millimeter. Slide up, pop the gasket out, slide the bottom back in place, leaving the top away. So we'll do the outside prep, inside prep, and then we'll lay out these pre-cut pieces of material, and then we'll hop onto the back window. It's always a good, Happy to wipe the inside of the rain guards, just so nothing drips from there. Inside prep, spray razor spray, squeegee spray. Back in stock at windowtintsupplies.com, single edge razor blade holders, and the .009 American line blades. Quick once over, make sure there's nothing on the glass. Especially these older trucks, you don't know if there's been tint on it before. If there's a little speck of glue, it'll ruin your whole job. There's glue on the bottom here. So that has been tinked on this window before. Staying away from this etching here that will dull the blade out immediately. Go down the sides with my Ofa blade and across the bottom, get extra low. Just in case there's any glue residue down there. And then on the etching, I'll take my finger with the towel wrapped around it and remove any residue of the glue that was on this window from around those the letters and numbers. Towel with a stick down the sides. And we'll flush it out. All in the prep work. Now we're gonna leave these windows rolled down about two inches because we have pre-cuts and we're not gonna be hand cutting this. So that window's all prepped, we'll just prep this one and we'll get to installation. If you guys like these videos, make sure you like, subscribe and comment good for the algorithm, helps support the channel. The more you support the channel, the more I support you. The more I support you, the more successful you'll be. Let's go. Now there hasn't been tint on the back doors, so we know that there's no glue residue there. Let's get forward with installation. 
So I'm gonna grab my Kavacha CS charcoal, 5%. Mount it about an inch from the top, like so. We already have the excess weeded out. Squeegee it in place. Removing the contamination from the top edge. Wipe the top edge with my hand. And we'll do the famous Window Tint Warrior spray, squeegee spray. Flushing that bottom out. Five and a half inch yellow turbo. Windowtintsupplies.com. Overlapping strokes. Flush down the back, across the bottom. Miss the center. pre-cut nice and tight using that computer cut supplied by ceramic pro nice tight fitment squeegee wrap seal up that top edge with the heat gun this is how you do it once that top edge is sealed we can roll it up squeegee at the bottom Move on to the back door. It's all about the workflow. Seal the bottom edge with the heat. No towel. Give it a quick wipe down. Inspect it from the outside. Move on to the back door. Miss the outside, grab the tint. Kabacha CS, charcoal, 5%. Beautiful. Make sure you check that link in the description. Get you signed up for Ceramic Pro Kabacha window film. Make sure you mention Window Tint Warriors in your request form. They'll take care of you. Spray, squeegee, spray. Spray, squeegee, spray. Feel that liner, don't slip on it. Bottom load, front corner first, keeping it back away. If you guys watch my videos enough, you can become professional window tenters just by watching and practicing. It's that easy. Get that little extra material bunched in the center so that we have room to work with on the sides and spread it out. This pattern has a little bit of an overhang here, so I can just trim that with a knife. It's not a problem. I'll show you guys how to do that. So we're gonna have to have a little bit of a bigger gap on the back edge, because we don't want a light gap on the front. This back edge comes out as it rolls down, as you can see, which is completely normal to have a slightly larger gap on the back edge. Obviously, if you were hand cutting this, we could make it a lot more precise, but we're dealing with a pre-cut pattern here, and uh, on the older vehicles, they're not 100%. We do to give the customer an option for hand cut or pre-cut. We go over there, disclaimers of how it could end up, especially on the older vehicles. All in all, on new vehicles, the pre-cuts are pretty spot on. Heat gun. We have this overhang here, so we're gonna stay away from that with the heat. We're just gonna mount the rest of the top edge, make sure nothing else is overhanging. We'll heat this top corner up from the outside. The whole idea is to evaporate as much water between the film and the glass as possible so that when we trim that with the razor on the inside, the film doesn't pull away. We want it to be stuck. Right. With these types of trimmings, I like to use a 30 degree blade so that I get a nice sharp cut. These blades are not stainless steel, they're carbon, so they will cut the glass if you cut on the glass, but we're just cutting on the top edge so we're not gonna cause any damage here like so. Just work my way down. Nice consistent. That's it. Now that takes a lot of practice and patience. But once you get it, you got it. And once you got it, you can get it. Squeegee at the bottom edge.
work out the sides, and then we'll seal the bottom edge. got the doors done, we'll turn the key off so the battery doesn't die. And then we'll put these gaskets back in quick and slap the back window on. So to put the gaskets back in, pop them back on, push the panel against the door, lift it up, push it down, lock in place. Put the screws back in, one behind the handle here. Sometimes you gotta shift the panel a little bit to get that hole aligned with the door panel hole. One on the bottom corner. Door lever cover back. In. And then again, we have the lock switch. We'll put this forward and we'll put this forward. Put the front end first, make sure that hole lines up into place. Bring this back a little. Good to go. To the front door. Gasket back in place. Some new residue here, we'll take that off. Door panel up against the door, down. Make sure all the parts are clicked in. I like to put this front top triangle in first. Pop it into place. And we have this bracket here that's supposed to be screwed in somewhere else, but it was not. So I'm gonna take the panel off actually. Yeah, there's definitely something missing right here. I'm gonna have to check the other side on this. When I do the other side, I'll see how this piece is lined up, but otherwise you'll put the screw back in here. You'll pop this piece back on front end first. Make sure that works. I am not gonna leave this like this. I'm gonna check the other side and make sure that that piece goes back on. But I just wanna show you guys for demonstration purposes because I'm not gonna do that in the time frame of this video. So do make sure you put that screw back on. When you put this cover back on, you have to hook the front end first. The back one, it doesn't matter. Long screw goes down here. And then we just have this one other screw that's gonna go right here, which I'll take care of later. And we can't use a razor blade on the inside here, so we're gonna use the white non-score pad. And then we'll apply the film. So we'll do the inside prep, which will be a simple spray, scrub, and wipe. The defroster contacts you want to be careful of. I like to pop those down and off instead of bending them, because if you bend them, sometimes they pop off the glass, and that's uh, something you'll have to get repaired. It's a quick scrub. Obviously, if there's any sticker residue or anything like that, we have to work on that and get that off first. But thankfully, that isn't the case with this truck. Just simply scrubbing it up and wiping it down. Then we'll do our spray squeegee spray. Spray that out. White mist on the window. You don't want to spray too much across the top because contaminants can drip down from under the headliner. So we'll come out. We're going to do an air peel here. So I like to mist the whole piece of material up so that adds weight to it, gets rid of the static and I'll just start peeling the liner. Spray the glue side, make sure it doesn't stick to itself. Work my way down. The alternative to this would be mounting it to the truck or car and peeling it from the door. But this truck is very dirty, so kind of stay away from that. Swap it around so the top is facing me. Frankenstein, hop inside. And stick it from itself. And I'll get it up and I'll put the left side on first with the right side away. And I'm working my way onto the glass. Making sure we don't get any handle increases. Very carefully sliding it into place. Make sure the top doesn't hit the headliner. Once you have this lined up, you really want to squeegee across that top edge first so that no contaminants drip from the headliner. We'll hold that in place, go across the top. Let's get it mounted in place. Really pushing all that water, sealing up that top edge, and then we'll squeegee downwards. We are going against the defroster lines, but we want to make sure we're pushing this foam down. So if any fingers pop up, they pop up on the bottom and we can shrink them because that's a shrinkable direction. Bunch up with the material there. It must be some glue from the back window. It's something we can push it past. 
little bit of heat and that'll lay down. So let's take the heat gun and go across the bottom, the sides, put the bottom first, just in case any fingers need to be shrunk. And then of course, sealing up that top edge to make sure no fingers pop up after the customer leaves. That's good. We'll put the defrosting line contacts back on. They slide back on. Give it a quick wipe down. And that is it. All right, guys, now that's how you tint the side doors in the back window with a single piece rear window on a 2004 GMC Sierra 1500. Same thing as a 2500, 3500, same exact concept. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.